So we are going to tell you about Inquire, which is a biology textbook with knowledge representation and reasoning. I'm a computer scientist, and my research focuses on large knowledge-based systems. By a knowledge base, I mean a computer program that has an explicit representation of knowledge done using an ontology that it can use for reasoning to answer questions. Over the last decade or so, my research group has worked on technology to create knowledge bases from science textbooks. In our recent work, we have started to address how this technology could be used in the context of digital textbooks so that the transition from the paper textbooks is not merely superficial, but leads to better learning for a wider class of students. And I'm a science, computer science, and mathematics educator. And I'm interested in how a knowledge base can be used to map complex and abstract ideas, as well as how a product using this knowledge base could improve reading comprehension and problem solving. This is Campbell Biology. It's the uh, most commonly used textbook for advanced placement, high school biology, and other advanced high school courses, as well as first-year college courses. It's used by approximately 200,000 students every year. Inquire is an iPad app that we developed uh, with funding from Vulcan Incorporated. It uses the ninth edition of Campbell Biology, and it has a knowledge base behind the scenes in addition to looking like an ebook. This knowledge base facilitates active reading and problem solving. Active reading is reading with a purpose, usually to understand a concept or answer a question. In active reading, a student might predict future content, ask questions, make connections between concepts, or explain their work. And we feel that active reading supports reading comprehension. We'll do a little demo of uh, a student doing active reading using Inquire. Okay. Yeah, so this is a video. If you could just play that, please. Yep. I'm, I'm in section, section 10.2 10 10 on photosynthesis, where I've already highlighted some material and taken notes. This section refers to thylakoid membrane that was discussed earlier in the book, but I've forgotten about it. I can tap on thylakoid membrane and get a pop-up definition, or read more to see a glossary page. Here's that definition that the textbook authors wrote and the rest is generated with the help of a knowledge base. Here I can see a concept graph that shows me all the structural features of a thylakoid membrane, including a chloroplast electron transport chain and all of its subparts too. And I can view the figure from the textbook that shows me those photosystems I read about in a thylakoid membrane. I'm predicting that I'm going to need to know something about function. I know the function of a thylakoid membrane here, but what about the function of those parts I saw? Let's ask a question. What does a chloroplast electron transport chain do? As I type, you'll notice the questions below repopulated. Sometimes these are helpful because I don't quite know what to ask. In this case, I can ask something a little more precise. So my answer is non-cyclic electron flow. That's neat to see because I recall seeing electron flow as my next section. I've already made a connection to the next section as well as predicting and asking questions. So just a little comment because we couldn't do it live. Um, I'll point out that we just practiced some active reading. I was predicting future content. I was asking questions. I was making connections between something I'd already read about, photosystems and the thylakoid membrane. And I could have taken some time to take some notes or explain what I'd done. So moving on to the next slide. Um, we also see inquires being very useful in problem solving. So for instance, inquire could reduce the need to memorize knowledge. Um, it could also help students compare and relate concepts for a deeper understanding and help students deconstruct problems by suggesting simpler questions. So here are some examples. These are three questions that are straight from the Campbell Biology book. And the first one asks students to compare common characteristics of mitochondria and chloroplasts, specifically membrane structure and function. So um, you could use Inquire to directly ask about the similarities between those two organelles that you'll see on the next slide. 
And I could get part of my answer right away. So what's happening here is I'm generating a question, and as my question is generated, the knowledge base behind the scenes is being used, data is being retrieved, and then the answer is being constructed. Nothing here is human authored with the exception of the two definitions at the top of the screen. Those come from the glossary at the back of the textbook. So what I see here is an answer to part of my question. I see energy transformation as a common function, but I don't see anything but the common commonalities between the two membranes. Clicking through to look at the differences, I can see that I have special names for those membranes, um, a mitochondrial membrane and a chloroplast membrane. And then ideally a student might ask a more specific question. So if the student asks what are the, what are the similarities between mitochondrial membrane and chloroplast membrane, they get this presentation and get closer to an answer. They see they're both double membranes. So here what we've modeled is the ability to, for a student not to have memorized any knowledge, but here a student's able to understand more deeply content that's probably presented very, in very separate places in the textbook. The second question, do plant cells have mitochondria, is a simple yes, no question. A lot of students would not struggle with that, but what makes it hard is the explain part. A lot of students wouldn't know where to start. We could start an inquiry simply by asking the original question, do plant cells have mitochondria? During the course of asking the question, our system, again, working with the knowledge base behind the scenes, can suggest related questions. All questions are also generated on the spot. They are not, never pre-authored. So here I get a relationship question as the first suggested question, and the student could just click through. Here the student could get verification that indeed a plant cell does have a mitochondria because a relationship shows that a plant cell is a type of eukaryotic cell and uh, every eukaryotic cell has a mitochondria. Looking at the third question type, here it's not really a question at all. Here the, the textbook authors are proposing a, something that's actually false and you're asked to argue against it. Most students would hesitate to solve this problem. They wouldn't know how to start. With our system, they're able to ask a simple question, what is an endomembrane system? And then from there, use related questions, use content in an answer like you've seen us demonstrate here to work towards a deeper understanding. Let's, not, let's now say a few words about the knowledge representation in Inquire, which enables the behavior that you just saw. We have a process using which we systematically go through every single sentence and every single diagram in the textbook and formally represent it in our system. Campbell Biology has approximately 4,000 concepts, and we have organized them into a concept hierarchy of the form shown at the top right corner of the slide. For each concept that appears in the concept hierarchy, we have a more detailed representation. So for example, for the concept of biomembrane, we would have an enumeration of its parts and their spatial arrangement. We would have an enumeration of its key spatial subregions. <clears throat> These graphs, uh, such as the one shown for biomembrane, they are different from the concept maps that are used in the education community in the sense that all the edge labels, they are derived from an ontology. And these graphs are translated into a logic program that can be used for reasoning purposes. So for example, for the comparison questions that you saw earlier, we would have detailed graphs both for mitochondria and chloroplast, which we will use for answering that question on the fly. So we've done a preliminary evaluation of Inquire for its utility, and we had two groups in the study. One was a group that simply used an ebook with highlighting and note-taking capability, but no reasoning. The second group used full Inquire, as you saw it today. Both groups were trained and then given a classroom-like activity. They were assigned reading and given their ebook to help them. Then they were assigned homework, also with the ebook. We then took the ebook away and asked them to complete a post-test survey and a debrief. We found the group with Inquire were able to perform about 10% higher on both assess assessments. These differences in scores are statistically significant, but they should be considered carefully considering this, the uh, small number of subjects. So active reading, homework support, and better grades are some of the initial examples that illustrate the potential of coupling knowledge representation with a digital textbook. In our informal discussions with the students, they told us that while using Inquire, they felt more engaged with the material than they would have felt otherwise. They also commented that a tool like Inquire would have special appeal to challenge students who may be afraid of asking questions in a classroom. These findings are, of course, preliminary, and they need to be tested on a much larger scale and in a much more rigorous fashion. 
There are other uses of knowledge representation that we have considered on, in our work, but we have not fully investigated them. For example, it can be used to develop a more accurate model for student comprehension or to scaffold a simulation that might be embedded in the textbook. So in summary, we are at a point where paper-based books are transitioning into digital books. And knowledge representation gives us a fantastic opportunity to ensure that this transition is not merely superficial, but also leads to better learning for a wider class of students. We have a fantastic team working on this project with us, and specifically, we'd like to call out the help we've received from Center for Technology and Learning at SRI and Jeremy Rochelle's team, who have really helped us in telling the story from the educational research point of view. Thank you very much. Thank you.